First thing in line on the Mixbus processor is this VSC2 Vertigo plug-in version by Plugin Alliance. Gives you a VCA style compressor, barely touching, giving me a little gain. The Greg Wells Mixcentric plugin. For some reason, dialing this up to three and adjusting my ins and outs so there's the gain staging is correct. Sounds really good. It adds like a lower mid-range tightness and some sheen on the top. Manly Massive Passive. Mainly just for some gentle boost. This one's a little higher than gentle, but these are. And it gives a little analog sheen to it in a nice way. Then I have a Dangerous Liaison B. So this, you'll see, is an analog insert. So we'll check that out. This is the Dangerous Liaison switcher unit. It has two paths, A path and a B path. It has six loops, and on each of these loops, I have a specific device. On loop one, I have a pair of Tonelux compressors dedicated for tracking or insert. On loop two, I have a pair of API 525 compressors that I use when I'm tracking or use it on inserts during a mix. And then loop three, I have two Tonelux EQs that I'll use during tracking or when I'm mixing on an insert. Loop number four, five, and six are mainly dedicated to the mix bus. So on number four, I have a pair of Tone Lux compressors, which add a nice round low end and rein in that part of the mix, but really, really do something nice sonically. And I dial the gain back a bit on those. On loop number five, I have the Dangerous Compressor, which is really kind of pristine, and I'm using it for some glue. And loop number six is the Dangerous Back CQ. And the Dangerous Back CQ has some great filters that I'll use for extra high-end filtering, or maybe if there's low-end rumble, sort of closes in the mix and really focuses it. Then after that, we're going back into Pro Tools, and I have the BXV2 EQ, and this is a, a mid-side EQ, and I have a tiny bit of cut on the sides and the lower mids, and a similar thing in the mono section. But what's great about it is, is right here, I have the stereo width control, and you'll see that move from section to section in the song. So here I'm in a verse, and it's set a little lower. Then when I get to the chorus, it widens out. And it helps me blow up the choruses a little bit. And then I have this Pro L3 by FabFilter. And you can see it's not adding a lot of gain. It's just mainly keeping me from going over. And then my favorite thing is the adapter AB. So here I can see a, a spectral analysis of the mix as it's playing. And I can compare it to another mix. And what's great too is you can gain match right in the plugin. So if you have seven or eight of your favorite reference mixes and they were mastered, you can balance them to where you're at so you can do a true comparison. So let's hear some of it in action. So I'm going to play the verse into the chorus, and I'm going to uh, let you hear it with the mix bus processing in, and then we'll go again with it off. Now it's all in. It sounds amazing. Tonight, we're gonna rock the canyon. The earth is shaking The Okay, so now we're going to hear the entire mix with no mix bus processing. It sounds amazing Tonight We're gonna rock the earth is shaking. The band crew and crowd are gathered here. We are building now. It's been a long time just to get to here. Playing music from the So you heard the difference when I kicked it back in. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. I leave these on 
the one I'm mixing at the, I put them in in the beginning, they're in the template. So once I start working, I don't have to do as much individually because these are already there. And this is once again a combination I've worked on and modified and you should do the same. So having these in place on my template and ready to go not only saves me from adding too much processing down the line, it allows me to get to where I want to be much, much faster.